Welcome to today's Facebook Live. I'm here to discuss heart healthy recipes in honor of Heart Month. I have Kelly Johnson. She's an outpatient dietitian with Memorial Herman, and she is going to talk about healthy desserts and alternatives that we can use in those desserts. So she has made a delicious array of options here for us. Um, we're going to start with this black bean brownie. So Kelly, can you tell me kind of how you made this, the different ingredients that are involved, and um, why black beans? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Um, Thank you for having me. I have two favorite things in my life. One of them is Valentine's Day and the other is desserts, although I'm not a big baker, which will come out later, I <laughs> promise. Um, but yeah, so the first one we have here is those black bean brownies. They actually don't have any flour in them. Oh, okay. So um, what they did instead was they put um, just mashed up, you know, processed black beans or, you know, food processor black beans mm -hmm. and then quick oats. So okay. not just even regular oatmeal, but those quick cooked so oatmeal. these right here that yes. come in the canister uh -huh. like this. Yeah, those quick oats right okay. here. Um, and so the cool thing is that they do have um, a little bit less sugar in them as well, just in the recipe by itself. Um, but there's lots of chocolate. These are regular chocolate chips in here. You're not supposed to omit those because that definitely makes it, um, <laughs> that makes or breaks the black bean <laughs> brownie. Um, so black beans, though, is we use them to increase the fiber just a little bit, but also to decrease the calories just a little bit too. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of a traditional brownie, what mm -hmm. does that calorie intake and sugar intake look like in a traditional brownie? So something about this size on a traditional brownie would probably be closer to 200, 220 calories. And this guy here is about 115. Oh, wow. So you are getting, you're getting a little bit of a calorie break. Um, it's not a huge calorie break, so if you love sweets, I would say making these substitutions more often is a great idea. Um, if you're a once in a while sweet eater, you maybe just have the regular brownie, right? Okay. Um, this one tastes pretty good. I tested it out on my fiance last night and he said, oh, it tastes like a regular brownie. So, I mean. So you don't taste the black beans at all? No, you do not actually oh, taste the black okay. beans, which is interesting. Sold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it also has, um, it does have sugar in it. So um, it is maple syrup, oh, which okay. I have here, um, which we don't want to discount that as sugar, right? Okay. So sometimes we think, oh, if it's not white sugar, it's healthy, it's fine. Um, but even though we have um, maple syrup in this recipe, which I think cuts a lot of the black bean taste, uh -huh. um, we still have to count it towards our added sugars for the day. So Okay, awesome. Um, and then next over here on this tray, too, we have some chocolate dipped fruit. Mm -hmm. So... Kelly has included here strawberries and grapes. So can you talk about um, kind of how you prepared this and then why you chose strawberries and grapes over something like a banana or an orange? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So this is going to be our dark chocolate. Um, and I just literally bought a dark chocolate, um, this guy here at the store. And then I put it in the microwave at 50% to melt it down a little bit without, you don't want to scorch it. Um, and then I just dipped the um, dipped the fruit in there, and then the grapes we kind of just drizzled the chocolate over those. Um, pro tip was to cut because <laughs> I made this mistake. <laughs> cut the strawberries, and then when you dip them, put them on their heads so that it kind of oh, okay. so that the the chocolate doesn't get ruined whenever it sets down. Yeah, such a great idea. Um, but so. The good thing is you could put any fruit on here. Oh, so okay. some fruits are a little bit higher in sugar than others, but the good thing is that whenever you're counting those added sugars, you don't have to count fruit because it's natural sugar. Okay. Yes, these are covered in chocolate, so you would have to count <laughs> the sugar that's in the chocolate, but um, even if it's going to be a slightly higher sugar content, like a banana might have a little bit more, something like that. The good news is we don't have to count those towards our added sugar, and fruits are healthy, and we should always be eating our fruits. Okay, good deal. So I gotta ask the question: Why dark chocolate over milk chocolate? I'm a Hershey's girl, so you, you know I. I think I Hershey's love makes that. dark chocolate. <laughs> Well, now I know. <laughs> so, um, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you have milk chocolate chips in your pantry, um, why would you say use dark chocolate over that? What are the health benefits? So the cool thing about dark chocolate, although it is going to still be pretty high in calories, um, the cool thing about dark chocolate is that it's got more of that cacao bean in it. Okay. And the cacao bean is where we get some of those health benefits from. Um, they have little tiny compounds called flavanols. Um, and they're going to be um, 
potentially healthy for our heart, right? Um, so the higher the percentage, so you'll see this guy here is 70%, the more likely it has more of those flavonols. Now you can't be 100% sure because no one's going around measuring how many phytochemicals are in each little chocolate, but you get a better option. Now what you don't get, it's a little bit more bitter, mm -hmm. has a little bit less sugar, because basically the 70% means that they're pushing out some of that sugar. It's 70% by weight. Okay. So that means maybe 30% of it's sugar, whereas if you had milk chocolate, it would be more like 40% cacao bean, and the rest would be sugar and milk. That's what makes it creamier and smoother. Um, so that's you are getting those flavonols, but yes, you have to remember that it's still got those calories in it, and we want to be at our healthiest body weight. So you know, having it as you know every night as part of your medicine or something maybe wouldn't be that great. But if you're enjoying your chocolate, um, you can feel happy that it has a little extra nutrition boost to it. Awesome. And then last but not least, a delicious cake. <laughs> so something a little tricky about this cake is there's a secret ingredient in the middle and I'll Ooh, let Kelly talk yes. about what's in here. So secret ingredient is going, so on the outside we have Cool Whip. That's pretty easy, right? I um, cut the strawberries in shapes of hearts just to make them Valentine's Day. But in the middle, it's made of watermelon. So you maybe want to warn people before they're getting excited <laughs> about a chocolate cake. Um, but we wanted to try and cut it to show you guys that there's watermelon in here. This is a plastic knife. Oh, this is the, it's not working. Ah. Um, so it does job. end up cutting pretty much like a regular cake um, if you can do it right. Mm, this is going to be rough. <laughs> this is going to be rough. Um, ah! oh! Well, <laughs> <Ta -da>! <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we got watermelon in the middle. That's great. All right, cool. So, so what a great healthy alternative to a traditional cake. Mm -hmm, yes, it's um, definitely going to be um, less calories, more fiber. It's going to have those nutrients in it. So it's going to be a good option. And it does end up coming out like a cake, even though that one's in on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll eat the rest. <laughs> so, um, you know, as we're sitting here talking about desserts, um, can you just kind of talk about what an average person's daily sugar intake should be and kind of what we should look for? Sure, yeah. So we should be aiming for no more than 24 to 36 grams of added sugar. So 24 is on the women's side and 36 is on the men's side because they get a little more because they eat a little more calories. And again, that's that added sugar, so luckily we don't have to count fruit in. If we were taking this guy here, we would have to count the chocolate and the Cool Whip, but not necessarily the strawberries or the um, watermelon. Now, if you have diabetes or something like that, then you do need to be counting those carbohydrates, but okay. as far as your added sugar intake goes, you that would be what you would count. Great. So, um, you know, what, what, we, what would we compare that to? Say, if I'm drinking a soda or having a donut, mm -hmm. I mean, what is, would that kind of eat up my entire daily intake? So that's a good question because grams is kind of a hard thing for us to visualize, especially mm -hmm. when we're looking at sugar. So, um, you know, a donut probably has about 11 grams of added oh, sugar. Okay. So that would be about half of your daily intake. So you could have one donut, mm -hmm. still have a little room left. Um, something like a soda, though, or even like a sweet tea or a lemonade, a lot of times, if it's 20 ounces, it's already got 50 to 60 grams. Wow. So that's almost double what we should be having. Um, so in that case, I would consider we could do sodas or something like that as a once in a while treat, but we definitely wouldn't want to be doing it every day because that would um, definitely set us back on our sugar intake for the day. That puts a lot of things into perspective. Yes, for it does. Me. Yes. Um, so, you know, just like how you substituted a lot of different options in these desserts, what else can we use to substitute traditional ingredients mm -hmm. like flour or sweetener or even just texture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of really cool things that you can do. I'm not like huge into baking, uh -huh. but I know that um, you can, most of the swaps have to do with fat. Okay. So um, usually when you're baking, you have your oils or your butter or something, and you want to be um, swapping that out to kind of decrease the calories a little bit without sacrificing too much of the ta taste. So I've seen things like avocado be swapped in. I think I've seen uh, mashed banana, mashed prunes, applesauce. Okay. Um, I've also seen applesauce be swapped in for um, sugar in a recipe too. Okay. Tasty option. Yeah, exactly. And the thing we... The thing you have to remember though is it's not a one-to-one -one swap, so I would definitely look up online, get creative, and see, okay, if I do half of this amount of oil, maybe I add this much banana, so make sure you're getting it right or else it might turn out a little bit funny. Sure. Yeah. Makes total sense. 
Um, and then, you know, I think a question that a lot of people have, too, are what are the differences in these sweeteners, like stevia, cane sugar, even just sweet and low? I know, um, you know, when I'm grocery shopping, I see a lot of these different options in the aisles, and I never know which one to choose or mm -hmm. which one's right for me. Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So as far as our cane sugar goes, you know, it's just from the sugar cane. It has calories. It has um, the grams of sugar in it. The difference between that and something like sweet and low or stevia is that those guys are going to be calorie free. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes if you are wanting to up the sweetness without a whole bunch of sugar, say in a baked recipe, you could sneak in a little stevia or a little sweet and low. Um, now sweet and low is going to be man-made from saccharin. Stevia is going to be extracted from those stevia leaves. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing to note though is that it is a great way to decrease sugar and calories in a recipe but we don't quite know exactly what it does to our bodies when we're putting something sweet in there, but it doesn't have the same physiological response because it doesn't get the, you know, the grams of sugar from it, essentially. So um, it is safe and it's fine to use, but I personally try and limit those as well mm -hmm. um, just for my own diet. So, sure. But, I mean, it's a good way to kind of cut the sugar a little bit in these treats that you have every now and then. Yeah. Sure, makes sense. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, making these delicious desserts that we are going to enjoy off camera. Um, again, Kelly is a dietitian here at Memorial Hermann, and we are celebrating Heart Month. So if you guys have any questions about any of these heart healthy recipes, or um, you want to learn more about how to eat better, feel free to leave comments in the comment section of this post, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you.